Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes. All right. Hey, you guys are awesome and you are brave. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're brave. And I mean, you're Wisconsinite, right? This is us. We go out in the cold and we're not afraid of it. It's, it's just part of who we are. But, you know, I get it too for those joining us online. There's legitimate reasons not to drive out when it's whatever degrees. So we welcome you if you're joining us online. Uh, but together this morning, we get to worship Jesus. And that's our privilege, and it's our right as believers. And so I'm so glad that we get to worship him together this morning. In Revelation chapter 4, there is this incredible scene of heaven, this picture of what's happening in heaven. And there's these crazy creatures who are worshiping around the throne and the bible says that they are full of eyes front and in back these four living creatures that are around the throne in heaven and and when you think about this why are they full of eyes front and back they're covered in eyes and and here's why i think that they're covered in eyes they get to see the one seated on the throne. They see him. That's their, that's, that's their privilege, is seeing the one seated on the throne. And this is really incredible. What is their response to seeing the one sitting on the throne? And here's what the Bible says. It says, each of the... Each one of the four living creatures has six wings and was full of eyes all around and inside. And they never rest day or night saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the all-powerful who was and who is and who is still to come. Their response to seeing the king on the throne is to cry out in worship, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God the all-powerful one? And that's my prayer for us this morning, is that we would see him, the one seated on the throne, who is worthy, and that our response would be worship, that our response would be adoration, that our response would be a respect and an awe and a devotion. And that we would join in with heaven's song, singing holy, holy, holy. God, you are incredible. You are worthy. You are the almighty one. And we bow before you today. God, we worship you. Come and be present amongst us. Let us see you and worship you like you deserve. Please stand and let's worship him together.
As Revelation continues with that amazing scene in heaven, Jesus comes into the picture. And Jesus comes into the throne room. And it says, they sang a new song. Worthy. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were killed. And at the cost of your own blood, you have purchased for God persons from every tribe language, people, and nation. And you have appointed them as a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. And then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels in a circle around the throne, as well as the living creatures and the angel, or, and the elders. Their numbers was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands times thousands, all of whom were singing in a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was killed to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and praise. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth, in the sea, and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be praised honor, glory, and ruling power forever and ever. That's our Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's our Jesus. And he is wonderful. He is beautiful. And he is radiant. And here's what I want you to know this morning. As awesome as he is, as worthy as he is, he desires you. He desires you. He wants you and your heart. He wants you to come and to be a part of his amazing kingdom. Jesus died because he loves you. In a Earlier in the book of Revelation, it says that Jesus is called the true one. He is the true one. And that is truth, that he desires for you to come, to be with him, to be a part of what's happening in heaven for all of eternity. And, and I just want you to, to, to let that sink in for a minute. It's your heart that he desires. Jesus, um, by his blood, he made that possible for us to say yes to him. So we're going to take communion this morning, and this is for all who believe, for all who've said yes to him. And, and it was by his blood, it says, that he purchased for God people from every tongue and tribe and nation on earth. And that's us. We get to say yes to him because of what Jesus did. We get to be a part of what's going on in heaven because of what Jesus did. And so we remember that horrible night that he gave up his life for us. And he was sitting and he was eating with his disciples. And he took a loaf of bread and he broke it and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, Jesus, we remember you this morning. We worship you this morning. We remember what it costs that we get to participate in your kingdom, that we have this privilege of being your sons and daughters. It costs your body. It costs your life. And so we remember we will not forget 
what it costs to bring us into your kingdom. And we say thank you. Thank you for your body. Let's take of the body. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave it for all to drink. And he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. It's the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And so Jesus, there's nothing more precious than your blood. Your holy, pure, sinless blood. And you gave it for us that we might be washed clean, that we might be forgiven and set free, that we might be holy because of what you have done. And so we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for what you did. And we say yes to you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen. Drink of the cup. You are worthy. You want to sing this? I do want to sing. All right. is the worthy one. He is the worthy one. And and I am not. And we are not. But it is because of Jesus that we can stand here and worship free. And, and it's because of what Jesus has done. And so if you want to share what Jesus has done in your life, Today, we've got time for one or two testimonies that glorify God, that speak to his goodness. And so we want to hear from you together today. You can have a seat if you want to. But we want to we take a minute to give testimony to the goodness of God. And so if, if Jesus has worked in your life and you want to give testimony to that this morning, simply raise your hand and we'll come find you with the microphone. Bill, and I've been saved from the very pit of hell. Amen. I praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 
Thanks, Phil. Someday we got to get you to share your whole story. <laughs> scared everybody away by saying we only have time for one or <laughs> two. Um, all right. Is it my turn? I think it's my turn here. All right. Oh, this is heavy. I'm going to spill it all. Here we go. Don't want to lose all the marbles here. Then I'll be in trouble. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. We're going to continue and worship here in our service and uh, so one of my favorite things that we do as a church, uh, and it's, it's honestly one of, I mean, the value to me, especially as, as a, a new dad, right? Our, our little baby girl, Kaya, she's two and a half, and so we got to walk through this from the other side, from, from the going through this of dedicating our children's side with her, and that was such a special moment. It did, to me, this is, this is something that is so important for families to do as well as for our church family to highlight new life, to highlight uh, what God is doing, um, and to pray a blessing over our children, right? There's, there's so many things that get spoken to our kids and, 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 and so much that, that gets filtered through these two ears and and what are we going to hear? What are we going to believe? There, there's, there's so much of that. And so this is a moment for us to bless our children and to do that corporately with one another. And so we're going we're gonna to dedicate uh, six kids. Some of them are, aren't, aren't, they're almost adults, um, but they're still kids. And so we're, we're, we, we range from um, nine weeks right? So nine weeks um, to, I think, 16 years old here this morning, and, and it's, it's going to be exciting. And so um, I want to read out of Psalms chapter 78, Psalm 78, verses 1 through 8, uh, and this is what it says. Um, should just be the next slide, Richard. There it is, or we'll, we'll get there. Verse 1. There it is. All right. So my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. Verse 2. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things that we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders that he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commandments. They would be like their ancestors, a stubborn, or they would not be like, sorry, that not is kind of important here, right? Um, a stubborn and rebellious generations whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. And so there's this quote. So this, that's what we're doing. Psalm 78 verses 1 through 8 is what we're doing. We want to, to declare and to bless and to, and to speak the word of Jesus, the word of scripture over our children. And there's this quote by Reggie Joyner that I love, and it says, when you see how much time you have left, you tend to do more with the time that you have now, right? And, and does anybody maybe reflect on that in their life, right? Does time seem to get, go faster as you get older, right? Like, I remember, I, I'll look back at baby pictures of Kaya, and I won't even know that it's Kaya because she's changed so much. I don't even rec like it, it's it. She's you know it, it and that was just two years ago and it's just I don't even remember that time. It seems so far ago and so. You know here's here's just some some numbers for you because I'm a numbers guy. I like numbers. So it, when you have a new baby, you have 936 weeks until they're 18. 
When you have a kindergartner, you have 663 weeks until they're 18. When you have a sixth grader, you have 356 weeks. When you have a 12th grader, you have 39 weeks. And the countdown gets smaller and smaller. And so Kaya is 140 weeks old. And so out of the 936, we have less than 800 left with her, which seems like a lot right now. But it's slowly, slowly, slowly going away. And so you have a short time period as parents where we get to pour into our kids. And, and, and so there's a visual that I love to do. And I know, I know you guys, have, if, if you've been around here, you've heard this before. But it's important for us to teach this every time we do this and, and, and to teach why we do this. And, and so there's this visual that I love to do, and that's the, the marbles. And so this is a gift that we're going to give um, to the parents of Landon here this morning. And... and these marbles, so there's about a thousand marbles, give or take, so to represent the 900 some weeks that we have to raise our children. And so, for instance, this is my, this is my marble jar of number of marbles until Kaya is going to leave our home and become an adult. And, and hopefully I'll still be able to impact her and to speak into her life. But she'll start making her own decisions and, 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 and go somewhere else, live in a new home, get married, have kids, all of those things. This is, this is how much time, and, and it's full right now. And this is, how many mar- this, is, this is how much time I've had with Kaya. So there's 140 marbles in here. And so one of the things that I do every single week is I take one marble out of this jar and I put it in this jar and I thank the Lord for another week but I also remember that my time with her is limited and I want to take advantage of every minute and hour that I have with that beautiful little girl and to pour into her everything that I can and to raise her the way that the Lord has asked us to raise our children. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, this is what what Moses shares. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. So this is why we take a moment here and why we value dedicating our children. Why do we do this? We do this so that we don't forget. We do this so that we don't forget to raise our children in this way that Deuteronomy chapter 6 talks about. And so there's three things that we're going to look at today that that I want to invite you into. Number one, um, it's, it's the beginning of a personal relationship with Christ. As far as like when we talk about our kids, right, so Landon is the youngest, he's nine weeks old, right? A nine-week-old can't make their own decisions. It's going to be a long time before he makes his own decision other than feed me and I want to sleep, right? Like, that's, that's, but it's the beginning. It's the beginning of a journey that we hope is a lifelong journey with Christ. And number two, it's important that this is about intentional discipleship with your family. Parenting is, is everything you do in parenting has a purpose. Whether or not you know it, and the things that you are not investing in and being intentional with, you're doing accidentally, which is suffering. And, and, and so the, to, to raise our kids up in the Lord has to be intentional. And then the third is that it is done in a community, right? As everybody heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And so this is why I think much of your family is here today, extended family and friends, and, 
And this is, and, and it also, it bleeds over into the church. One of the, the vision that I, I would love to see, and our church is pretty good at this, but the, the, the idea is, like, how much of a blessing would it be for new parents if people in the church came alongside them and, and, and just served them, gave them date nights, blessed them with food, gave them opportunities, helped them, you know, gifted them, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. But we are here as a church family, and you as a part of this congregation can help other families raise their children in the, in, in the Lord. Now, that does not mean that you're the Bible thumper to their lives, okay? Like, parents have that job of intentionally discipling their kids, but it does mean you can serve each other and love each other. So this dedication, it is, it's a church body thing. It is not just for the parents. It's not just for the child. It's for the entire body. And so um, we have a lot to get through today, and I, so I want to do this as quickly as I can without limiting it. So I want to invite um, Stephanie and Tyler, you guys can come up here with Landon and the family. You guys too can, can kind of come up here, just stand here, and family and friend, just circle around them. And, and so do we have a, a picture, I think, of Landon and, uh, or a slide here for Landon? And, and so... There he is. Oh, those are some nice, cute pictures. He's totally sleeping, <laughs> which is awesome. That's, that's great. He won't remember any of this. Um, and so one of the things that I think is really important is names. And so I, I just want to share a little bit about Landon's name, um, some meaning. I don't know how much you've looked into this. But, you know, every time we call somebody by their name, we're speaking we're speaking into their life, a blessing into their life. And, and so Landon, um, Landon, the name Landon means land. It comes from that land or a grassy open meadow. Um, and, and some principles that come along with the name is, is to trust in God's promises and to have faith in his provision. And then his middle name is Gregory. And so Gregory means to be watchful or vigilant. Being attentive to, to one's uh, spiritual life. A, a verse on this front about Gregory is 1 Peter 5, 8, uh, if you want to look that up. And then um, your last name, uh, Shmet means a short form of the name of Simon, which means God has heard, um, which I think is, is kind of a, a cool name. And, and so I just want to speak that blessing that, that Landon will trust in God's promises and have faith in the provision of God, that he will be watchful and vigilant, that he'll be a leader, that, that he, he um, will <laughs> encourage and bless other people by, by his touch and by the words that he speaks and by his love for the Lord. Um, and, and I just love, you know, your, the last name of your family means, literally means God has heard. And so God will hear his prayers and hear the cries of his heart. And so we just want to pray a blessing over Landon. And so um, it, could I have my, some of our team, you know, Amy and Jess, you guys can come up here and just kind of just, just help me and whoever else I don't, wants to come up. We can, um, we don't need to scare people away with a hundred <laughs> people, but um, I just want to bless him and anoint him here with a little bit of oil and uh, just pray a continued blessing over him. And, and family, you can just, just pray with me as we bless him here today and, and dedicate him to the Lord. And so, um, Landon, we dedicate you in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we just thank you that you've knit this little boy together that you've created him with a purpose. You've created him with passion. You've created him with <laughs> emotions and, and, and feelings and, 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 and everything, Lord, that you, you know exactly who he is. And so, Lord, we just pray a blessing over him right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we dedicate him to you. Lord, we just say that the enemy cannot hold him. Depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, all of the, the horrible pain and wickedness of this world that we can face, Lord, that it will have no hold on him. 
Lord, that, that he will walk in peace, he'll walk in joy, and he'll walk in step with you. And so, Lord, we pray a blessing over him. We dedicate him to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And so, um, with that said, we have a little gift for you guys. So, if, if Haley, you want to just give it, and you guys can go, yeah, you can go and be seated. And, and then I'll, I'll, as they're sitting down, um, Lindsay and the kids, you guys can come on up wherever you guys are here today. There you are. And so, you know, when, when Lindsay heard we were doing child dedications, she was like, well, I never dedic- I want to dedicate my kids. And I'm like, can you do that? And she talked to Pastor Amy, and we're like, yeah, let's dedicate them. Let's bless them. And so, let's, so we're going to do this here this morning. And, and so um, I, could I just have some, uh, Amy, can you grab the mic? And, and let's just, I'll, I'll, if somebody else can help me just pray over these guys, we'll just take turns here. Um, and, and the team can come forward again. And so, yeah, the youth leaders can come forward. Um, I have the meaning of all of their names, but I, I, I'll just, I'll share this with you, Lindsay. And, um, and so, we talked about this. So a new baby is 936 weeks until they're 18. So Cole, I don't know if you knew this. Cole's the tall one. You're 856 weeks old. Which means, as a mom, you got about 80 weeks left. Madison, want to raise your hand? That's Madison. You're 782 weeks old. And so there's just a little over, a little over 100 weeks left. Remington is 668 weeks old, and Max is 551, and River is 358. And so, you know, I'm not going to make Lindsay count five bags of marbles and 850 things, and, and she's probably experiencing the, man, years go by fast, they grow up fast. And... Um, but we want to take a moment. Uh, your family is such a blessing to this church. It's so amazing to see the tenderheartedness in your kids and the joy that they have. And they love to serve and, to, and to, to just come and have fun in the house of the Lord. And so um, we just want to pray a blessing over you guys this morning. And so would you guys as we just pick somebody and pray over them here quickly and and we'll just keep going through until everybody's been prayed over. God, I just thank you for Cole. I thank you for the heart and the desire to follow you that you have uh, instilled deep within him. God, I pray that as he continues to grow to be a man, that you would fill him with the strength um, when he is weak, fill him with courage to do things that are very difficult. And fill him with grace to be kind to those who don't deserve it. Because you've given us grace first. God, bless him and help him to be successful as he leans on you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for River. And I, I, I pray, Lord, that his name would be such an indication of your river of love over this little boy. Father, such a precious addition to our church family. Lord, let your light burst from every cell in this little boy's body, that those who know river would experience your love through him, a little light walking around. Jesus, we pray for the whole family that you would knit them together in unity, that they would lean on each other. Best friends, Jesus. Lord, as iron sharpens iron, just pull them together as a source of strength to each other. Pour your love on them. We pray for Madison. God, just you have blessed her. She is 
full of grace and love and beauty. And God, I just pray that you would continue to mold her into a powerful woman of God, someone who uh, just stands firm on the truth of Jesus and the truth of the word of God. And God, I just pray that you will continue to bless her. God, make her life a shining uh, tower of light for your goodness and your grace, Jesus. Continue to bless her. Dear Lord, we pray for Remington. We pray that uh, you would be his guide for all of his days. We thank you for the uh, thoughtfulness you've instilled in him, Lord. We pray that you would work through him to reach others around him, Lord. That you would be a light in the darkness to those around him, God. Thank you for what you're doing in him. Continue your work. Help him to never fall away from you, Lord. Help him to see you always in everything that he does. That you're always there with him, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. God, we just thank you for Max. We, uh, we thank you that you have blessed him with so much joy and energy and life. And Lord, I pray that that would extend to the people that he comes into contact with, that the life and joy that you have filled him with would uh, pour over and bring life to the lifeless, passion to the passionless. And, and Lord, um, may you rescue people through Max. May you bring your presence to the world through him, in Jesus' mighty name. Give them a hand, and um, here you go, Lindsay. We didn't give you marbles, but here's a little something for you guys and your family. That would be a lot of marbles. <laughs> um, and so, all right. Amen. And so, uh, all right. So some of the things that we're talking about here is we're recognizing that these children are gifts from God, and we give a heartfelt thanks for God's blessing on them. Um, so Lord, we dedicate these children to you. Surrendering all worldly claims upon their lives in the hope that they will belong wholly to God. Lord, we will do our best to raise these kids up in a godly way. And Lord, we trust that you will provide and that you will bless them. And Lord, we promise, both as parents, and as a church family, that we will pray for our children. So, Lord, I just pray that you bless these kids, you bless this time, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, with that said, uh, we can take a minute and we'll dismiss our kids to their classrooms so they can head on down to their classrooms. Um, youth are going to the fellowship hall. Um, so, the youth... So middle school and high school students, if you'd like, you can go to the fellowship hall um, or you can stay in service, either one, whichever one is your, your choice. And so, man, that was a lot of kids we just left. This is awesome. All right. And so I know that that takes a little bit of time to do that, but it's, it's a value for us as a church to 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 pray for our kids, to bless them, and, and to go through that. So thank you for being a part of it. Um, I have an announcement here that, I, that I, I've hinted at the last couple weeks real quick before I dive into the message today. Uh, so we are going to do 30 days of prayer in February, okay? And so 
I just, I'm going to acknowledge right now that this is a big ask. And, uh, and, and I, I get that. I get that. And, but we want to be a praying church. That's who we want to be. We want to be a church that prays. We want to be a church that worships. We want to be a church that loves the Lord with everything that we have. And, and you know, as it's, we, I, meet with, I meet with five other pastors from, the, from the, our area, or four others. There's five of us, four other pastors on a weekly basis. Um, and, you know, it was interesting. This last week I was meeting, and, and one of the pastors, me and him were kind of having a conversation. He turned to me, and he's like, he was kind of like got a little sheepish, and he, he just was like, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say this in, in pride or anything, but he, we were talking about, like, like, what do you pay s- staff in the church? And he kind of was like, he's like, I don't want to let another church in Wapaka bless their staff better than our church does. As he kind of said that, and I'm like, ooh, uh, you know, I want to be that. I don't want another church to bless their staff, you know. And, and so we kind of had a laugh about that, but, but there's, if there's one thing that I could say, I don't want another church in Wapaka to be hungrier for the Lord than we are. And that's not because they're not hungry, it's because we're starving. And, and, and so, um, so we, we are going to pray, and, 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 and here's, here's what it's going to look like. Um, it's going to start out with a worship night on January 31st. So we're going to start January 31st. The worship night is going to start at 6 o'clock, and we're going to worship until 9 o'clock. Um, and, and, and so here's, here's the setup of the prayer. There's, there's, there's 30 days, and we're going to worship and pray for three hours every single day. And, and so... Then for, for the month of February, so it starts Wednesday, January 31st at 6 o'clock, so that's a Wednesday night. Then for February, so February 1st through the 29th, we, we are going to gather and worship and pray for three hours a day. And so Monday through Friday is going to be 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, so 6.30 is our normal prayer time right now. And, and here's... Here's what I want to just communicate as well as I can with you. I'm not asking you necessarily to come and pray for three hours in the building. What we're committing to as a church is that somebody's going to be praying intentionally for three hours every single day for these 30 days. A.M. A.M. And so, um, so I want, we, we want to give you the opportunity to come and engage we're going to have a prayer guide that goes with this, that walks us through it, um, but I would really encourage, I want, I really encourage everybody to come and make this a priority and to come and pray. And so Monday through Friday is going to be 6.30 a.m. till 9.30 a.m., so you can come at any time during that time. You can even come later, and, but, so we'll have specific things scheduled during that time to engage you in prayer, and then Saturday and Sunday is going to be 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., okay? And so for the month of February, this is going to be weird and different, and we're just going to have to figure it out, okay? It's going to be fun. So the month of February, Sunday morning services are going to be from 9 to noon, okay? Does that make sense? Like, so if you come at 10, you're going to walk into a prayer meeting. That's fine. You can come and you can join in. Um, it's going to look a little differently. We are going to engage in prayer specifically, and we are going to seek the Lord. There will still be the normal elements. We're, we're still going to take communion together. We're, we're, we're still going to preach the word um, during these times, we're, but we are, going to, we are going to worship and we're going to pray. And so, um, and the way that I view this is, we want you to come and be a part of it for whatever you can give, okay? So if that means you can give, you know, 6.30 to 7, I, that is valuable to what the Lord is asking us to do. If you can give 8 to 9, that's valuable. If you can give 6.30 to 9.30, that's great. Even on Sunday mornings, if you can only give 10 to 11, that's great, okay? And so it's, it's, I don't want this to be like, oh man, they're asking way too much, so I'm just not going to go. This is an opportunity for you to, to join in and, 
and come alongside, and I believe the Lord has changed lives through prayer here at this church, and He is going to continue to do that um, through these 30 days. Um, does anybody have any questions? Because, all right, are we ready to roll? All right, so I'm going to try and do this as, as quickly as possible, because I know we've already, I've been talking for a little while here. I talked for a long time last week, and I don't want to talk for a long time this week. Um, but there's something that I want to teach on this morning that is, that is really important. And so I know I, 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 I hinted last week, and it was a lie. Um, so I apologize. I, that I, I said that I was going to, to kind of share like what we're going to do this year, the vision of what we're going to do this year. And, and as I was, I, I had that prepared and then I was writing the messages for, for our, our, our prayer time, and the Lord is like, you cannot move on until you teach this. And so um, I feel like I need to talk about this topic first. And so we're going to touch on, on baptism today. And I printed you notes because I think that this is something that is, is confusing, and there's a lot of different thoughts on it, and, and so I wanted you to have something concrete in your hands. So if, if you need another, if you need a copy of the notes, um, if you need a copy of the notes, could you just raise your hand? Because we have, like, there's empty spots. So if you have an empty one near you, could you just hand them to somebody around you um, who's raising their hand? There's a couple in the back. If um, We'll get you one. And so um, thanks. I think Jesse's got the one in the back, so I think we're good. Um, so those are yours to keep, and, and I encourage you to write more notes on them because there's only so much that we can fit in a half sheet of paper. And so, what is baptism? This is what we're talking about, this idea of baptism, and how does it impact our walk with God? And so let's look at this in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. It says this, I therefore, the prisoner for the Lord urge you to live worthily of the calling with which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Listen to this in verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you too were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Okay? And so, we believe, as a church, that there is one baptism. Okay? There is one baptism, but, but here's what we find in Scripture there are three parts to baptism, okay? And so let's, let's talk about a few other things that we see this in. And one thing that's really, really important for us as, as we understand who we are as a church. Last week we talked about who we are as a church. And who are we as a church? Why are we here? We exist for one thing and one thing only, and that's to worship and exalt the name of Jesus above every other name. And so... But in understanding how we worship and work with the Lord, the Trinity is really, really important. And so the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, three persons. Okay? They're all fully, completely make one God. There's one God, there's three persons in the Trinity. And there's this perfect relationship amongst them. Some other areas where we see this, for instance, you, right? Us, humanity, mankind, we have, we're, we're one person, right? We're, hopefully, we're one person, right? But we have three different parts. We have a body, we have a soul, which is are like emotions and feelings, and we have a spirit. And another part that we find in Scripture is there's one salvation, but there's three parts to salvation, right? And so what does this look like? So there's one sort. The first one is, is, would be your past salvation if you've come to the Lord. If you haven't come to the Lord yet, it would be your future salvation. 
And that's, that's the justification. So this is when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior into your heart. And then you have the present salvation, which is the sanctification. God is sanctifying us. He is making us more like Jesus. He is giving us the power to make decisions to be obedient to the word of God today. That is what he's doing. He is sanctifying us. It, 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 we all, if we believe in Jesus, should be on a path growing closer to Jesus. And then there's the future salvation, which is the completed work of salvation, which is when um, it, it's, it's when we go to heaven, okay? And, and we rid ourselves of sinful flesh and we get to party in the presence of the Lord for the rest of our lives. And, and so, um, so, so the three parts of salvation. And so when we talk about baptism, what does baptism mean? And so um, I just want to balance this out and make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, can I have somebody's notes? Thanks. I, I erased, I copied a section out of my notes and it disappeared and it's important. And so, um, so, so part of the Trinity, we have the three persons of the Trinity, part of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was sent for a purpose, right? So Jesus came, he walked amongst us, he lived a perfect life and he died on the cross. And while he was walking in this world, he said, he said or after he rose again from the dead, he said, I am going to send Somebody, I am going to send the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit serves a purpose in our lives. And, and so here are just a few of the things that are given, a few of the titles, a few of the, the descriptions that are given to the Holy Spirit. So the, the main one is that he will be the helper, right? And so this is in your notes. Some other words are he will be your guide. He will reveal. He will lead. He will empower. He will fill. He will teach. He will testify. He will produce, distribute, anoint. He will wash. He will renew. He will unify. He will free. He will seal things. He will guarantee things. He will quicken things and he will dwell in your presence. He speaks to and speaks through. He transforms. He cries. He grunts. And he grants, he supplies, he gives access to, he strengthens, enables, he confesses Jesus, he moves, he knows all things, he casts out demons, he remembers, and he appoints. These are just some of the things that, that, the, that the Bible describes that the Holy Spirit does. And so we need to understand who the Holy Spirit is in our walk with God. Because does anybody know what? So the Holy Spirit is, is called the helper. And so what does the Holy Spirit help us do? To tell the truth, lead our lives, convict us, pray, comfort. The simplest answer is to know Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the vessel, <laughs> how does he help us? He helps us understand the word of God. And the word of God is our instructions for how we're supposed to live, which is everything that you just said, right? Like we're, we, we should do this because we have it given into us in our instruction. The Holy Spirit is the one who reveals Jesus to us. He is the one which, which salvation goes through. You did not save yourself. You did not come to Jesus on your own accord. The Holy Spirit sought you out. The Holy Spirit pursued you. The Holy Spirit revealed Jesus to you. That was the Holy Spirit. The helper is the one who points to Jesus. And so, that's the Holy Spirit's role in our life. And so what does baptism mean? We're going to talk about baptism here. And three, the three parts of baptism. And so what does baptism mean? It comes from the Greek word baptizo. Okay, this Greek word baptizo. And I wanted to write, like I wanted to say that it is, it is like the root word in Greek. But to be honest, baptism is kind of a word that is just made up. 
Okay, it's, it's, just, it's just made up. Um, and and they, just, they just started to use it off of this word baptizo. Okay, because baptizo in the, the original language, um, it's, are you looking for the slide? It's the next slide. Yeah. And so this, this, this idea of baptizo, this, 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 this word, it, it, it came from the, the word baptizo was used because what the, the most common phrase of it was you would take clothing and you would dip it in a dye. And so that, you know, so you take a white piece of clothing and you dip it in a dye and it would come out blue. And has anybody ever made like a tie-dye shirt? Has anybody ever tried to return the shirt to the original color? You can't, right? And so it's this idea that it's, it's dipped and it's immersed. This, this, this thing is immersed in something and it comes out different. And, it's, it, 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 and so the original, the, the word baptizo was used in the form of describing this process of dipping and transforming cloth. And, and, and so as we dive into like the original definition of this word, and so some of the, the, the ideas, there's, there's these, the first two you know, descriptions in, in a Greek dictionary talks about this. It's to dip repeatedly or to immerse or to submerge or to cleanse or to make clean by dipping repeatedly or by immersing. Okay, and so the, the, the church, and, and we see it first in, in the language of John when he starts talking about this idea and this word baptism, and it comes from this very thing. It's the idea of, of dipping, of submerging, of immersing in something which transforms the subject. Okay, and so that's the idea of baptism. And so, like I said, you see it, you know, tie-dye would be a great example Another great example would be with a pickle. Does anybody, how do you make pickles? You grow them in your garden, right? Well, you don't grow pickles. You grow cucumbers, right? You take a cucumber and then you fill a jar with vinegar and you put the pickle or you put the cucumber in and all of a sudden, in a little while later, it turns into a pickle. Has anybody ever tried to reverse that process? Right? It's this idea, that's, a, that's, a, that's just a visual, I, I don't, you know, you probably are like, it doesn't, it's not vinegar, or it's not, I don't know what it is. I've never made pickles, okay, it's just an example. Um, and so there's, there's three different baptisms that we find in Scripture. And I think due to not knowing these three, we are limiting our walk with God. Because maybe when we talk about baptism, you might just think, oh, that's when you get water baptized. And that's, that's all that you think about when you talk about baptism. And, and, it, and if that's all that you think about, I, I, got, I got this idea. Last, last night, um, we were driving to dinner, and, and my, my truck kind of makes like a little bit of a weird noise when it's driving in four-wheel drive, and you know, because there was snow. And so I turned it. I turned it off just to, make, just to make sure that it goes away, right? Because, um, you know, you don't want your truck making noise. And, and, and it did. But I was amazed. I was just amazed. Because the roads aren't that bad today. I was amazed at how much worse traction I got switching to two-wheel drive. I'm like, I didn't realize how much it was actually doing. And this is, this is the, like, just a picture. Like, if we limit baptism into just the idea of like, oh, it's just water baptism or it's just this one-time event in our life that we did. Like, we, we're not driving with the best traction in our walk with God. And so there's three different baptisms that we find in Scripture. And I also want to be, uh, before, we, before we dive into these three, I want to be transparent because there's, a, there's something that I've said in the past and I don't like the language that I use. Um... I, and so I, I'm just going to say, I, I was wrong, I think, on this. And, and if you were really paying attention, you might call me out. And so I'm going to tell you first. Um, I think there is an idea that we find in Scripture um, of 
of joining Jesus in his suffering, right? And so, so Jesus suffered on the cross and suffered in death and, and persecution. And, and there's a lot of scripture that points to like, like when we suffer, we actually grow closer to the Lord um, and, and, and we understand what the Lord walked through and we get a different, we get a different side of, of the Lord and the gospel and what he did by going to the cross. And um, I've used this, I, I know I've said this language of being like baptized into the Lord's suffering. And, and, and though, you know, that you maybe could make an argument of, oh, you were immersed in suffering and therefore you understood the suffering of the Lord. It's, it's not, it's more of a play on words versus a direct thing. And so I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. And so these are the three parts of baptism. Um, if you didn't catch all of that, that's okay, because then you didn't hold me to what I said that was wrong in the past. Um, and so three different baptisms that we find in Scripture. The first is we are baptized into the body of Christ, okay? So we're baptized into the body of Christ. And so the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Jesus. And so when does this happen? This happens when we declare and confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So when we, when we do that, we become a part of the body of Christ. We become a Christian. We become a part. And so that, who, who is doing the baptism? This is important. Who baptizes? The Holy Spirit baptizes who? Us. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into who? Jesus. Holy Spirit baptizes us into Jesus. We find this in a lot of passages of Scripture. I am just going to share one or two on these, but there are a lot around this. And so, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks or slaves or free, we were all made to drink of the one body. Spirit. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Okay? And so that's the first baptism. So this is the repent, seek forgiveness of your sins, and be saved through what? Through Jesus. Through his body, through what he did on the cross for our salvation. That's the first baptism. Into the body of Christ. That's what we celebrated by taking communion. And so, the Holy Spirit initiated this with you. And so you are now a part of the body of Christ. Your sins are forgiven, and you've been adopted by God, and He has given you eternal life. Now let's look at the second baptism, and that's baptized in water. And so, who is doing the baptisms? Disciples. Right? We are. People are. Who is baptizing? Who is getting baptized? We are. The disciples, followers of Jesus. And what are we being baptized in? Water. Okay? This is water baptism. So this is a command from the Lord that we are supposed to follow. We are supposed to be water baptized. And so this is disciples baptizing disciples in water. Look at this, Colossians 2, verse 12. It says, having been buried with him in baptism, you also have been raised with him through your faith in the power of the God who raised him from the dead. So baptism in water is a burial. It is a dying to yourself. It is a joining with Christ's burial and also his resurrection. So you go into the water, that's like into the burial. You rise again out of the water, that's like Jesus rising from the dead. Romans 6, 4 says this, Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may live a new life. So disciples baptizing other disciples in water, this is a burial. We are immersed into the death of Jesus, a cleansing, and it often brings deliverance from sins. Okay, so this is what we see many times. 
you know, somebody will come and recognize Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they're struggling to get over the sin in their life. They're struggling to, 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 to get rid of and to cut off the ties on their life. This is what baptism in water, it is a cleansing, it is a burial, it is a death to your former self. It, it many times brings deliverance from sins in that form, a cutting off, a cleansing, a new life. That's baptism in water. And the third baptism is this. It is we are baptized into, or we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, into the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so, who is doing the baptism? Jesus is doing the baptism. Who is he baptizing? You. In what? The Holy Spirit. Okay? And so there, there is a difference in these three baptisms. They are one baptism, but there are three parts to it. And here's what we find in Scripture. We find that it can happen at one time. All three of them can happen at one time. You can confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you can have all the sin, just, you know, all of your urge to drink or to do drugs or to whatever it is, you're just completely healed, you're, and, you, and you just experience the power and the glory and the wonder of God in just a second, just like that. Or, <laughs> you can confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior and walk for years in the sin that you were continuing in until one day you get water baptized and it breaks it all off and it frees you from it and then maybe at a future date all of a sudden the holy spirit just comes upon you and you're just like holy cow i never knew god was so powerful and you're baptizing the holy spirit in that formal way it can it can happen as one it's one baptism it's one god it's one thing but there are three parts to this and so jesus baptizes in the holy spirit look at this in matthew let's let's read these quickly let's go through these i baptize I baptize you with water, this is John talking, I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I am. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He, who is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay? Do you think if like we were just supposed to be water baptized, that John would write, he's going to baptize you with fire. Isn't water and fire kind of contradicting things there? Like there's something about Jesus' baptism that is different, that is, that is special. Mark 1.8, I baptize you with water. It says, um, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So where we're going here, I'm going to read four passages from, from the four Gospels. There are only ten things that are in every single Gospel. And, and, and most of those things are like the resurrection of Jesus, the death of Jesus, some of those really big things that you really can't avoid from being in all four of the Gospels. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is in all four Gospels, that Jesus will baptize you. And so then we have Luke 3.16. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I am is coming. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and Fire. Again, we see that word fire. John 1.33 says this, And I did not recognize him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining, this is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is the third part of baptism. And so what is the mark of the baptism in the Holy Spirit? The mark is is power. It's experiencing the power of God. And I just, I was listening to a pastor talk about this this week, and, and he had this phrase, and I loved it. Um, and I'm, I'm, so I'm stealing it. I just want to whet your appetite a little here today. I just love that idea of just like, just whet your appetite a little bit here to make you a little bit more hungry for the Lord. Because for the most part, you know, I don't know everybody in the room. I don't know where everybody's at in the room. But I think for the most part, we have, a lot of you have experienced the first two parts of baptism. 
But if I were to ask you, have you experienced and do you walk with the power of the Lord? I don't know how many of you would say yes. And so let, let's look at John chapter 3, verse 3 through 6. It says this, Jesus replied, I tell you the solemn truth. Unless a person is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What is he talking? Unless a person is born from above, this means that they have been baptized into a new body, baptized into Jesus. That is, unless they have been saved. Unless you've been saved, you can't see the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's the first part. And then Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time, can he? And Jesus answered, I tell you the solemn truth. Unless a person is born of water, water baptism, and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. We have salvation, we have water, we have spirit. 1 John 5, 7 through 8 says, For there are three that testify. What testifies? The spirit, and the water, and the blood. These three are in agreement. What is it testifying to? It is testifying to the overcoming power of the Lord. That is what baptism does. Baptism testifies to the overcoming power of the, war, of the Lord. When we die to ourselves, when we, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are testifying to that, the fact that Jesus is more powerful than me. When we get baptism in water, it is literally a public declaration of the power of God in our lives and the death to ourselves, the burial of ourselves. And, and, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, <laughs> or the baptism in the Holy Spirit, is the overcoming power of the Lord coming upon us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly through this. We see this in the Exodus story. So this is not just something that we find in the New Testament. We see this in the Exodus story. So, so what happened in the Exodus story? So God said, you need to go and sacrifice a lamb and take hyssop and put the blood of the lamb on your doorpost. And the angel of death is going to pass by and all who do not have the blood of the lamb on your doorpost are going to die. They're going to lose, they're, they're going to suffer. And so what did, the, 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 what, what did they need? They needed the blood of the lamb. And then so what that happened? So then the Israelites were, were, were free from their captivity and slavery. And they fled Egypt, right? And they came to the Red Sea. And God parted the Red Sea. And the Israelites went through the Red Sea. And their enemies and, 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 and the, 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 I want to say the sins of the past, but the, their past tried to follow them and tried to capture them and tried to bring them back. And the waters of the Red Sea crushed and destroyed their past, and they were delivered from their past captors. And so through water, you're delivered from your past sins. And then, so then the Israelites spent time wandering in the wilderness. They were led by the Holy Spirit. They were led by a, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, which would just be awesome if that was, like, uh, that would be cool. But they, So they were led by the Holy Spirit, and, and it he, the Holy Spirit brought them to the edge of the promised land, and so they had to cross the Jordan River in order to enter into the promised land. And so what did they do? They put the Ark of the Covenant at the center of the Jordan River. What was the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God in their midst. That is what they did. And so what did the Israelites have to do? They all had to pass by the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant, pass by in order to enter into the promised land. We have the blood, we have the water, and we have the spirit. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 2, it says, For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our fathers, this is, he's talking about the Israelites here, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and they all passed through the sea, so they were all under the cloud, the spirit. They all passed through the sea, the water. And they were all baptized into Moses. Moses was, was the representation, the, the, the physical representation uh, of God. He was the one who carried the word. That's not the physical representation. He was the one who represented 
and, and God used to lead the people out of Egypt. So we have body, spirit, water. John 20, 21 through 23 says this. So Jesus said to them again, peace be with you just as the Father has sent me. I also send you. <coughs> and after he said this, he breathed on them. Look at this. So after Jesus said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And so scholars believe that this, this is when the disciples receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Where the Holy Spirit comes and resides inside of their body. But then what did he do? What did Jesus tell his disciples to do? Did he tell them to go and wander the earth and do all of that? Not yet. He said, go and wait. Go and wait. What were they waiting for? They were to go and wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They, and what happened on the day of Pentecost? They were in the upper room. They were praying and they were worshiping. And the Holy Spirit fell on them. And they saw tongues of fire. And they began to speak in tongues. And, and what did they then do? They went and witnessed to the world. And they were clothed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38 says that Peter said to them, Repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So repent, repent, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Body, water, Spirit. One baptism, three parts, and what I want to see happen is I want to see our church move and be baptized and immersed in the power of the Holy Spirit. But the only way that that can happen is if we seek it and pursue it. Because for many of us, maybe we've never even had that invitation. And, and I, I don't like doing this as far as the form of like pushing this off to the future. But, but I believe that this is something that God is going to do um, through our time of prayer. Um, that He is going to Jesus is going to baptize us in fire. And, and so I want to whet your appetite and get you ready. Like if, 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 <laughs> if you're questioning the power of God, well then, then get ready. If you want to experience more of God, get ready because he is going to show up and he is going to do amazing things. And it, and it doesn't take a time of prayer. Right now, like what... It, what, is, what do we see in Scripture? How do we experience more of the, the Holy Spirit? We ask. Literally, all you need to do is ask, God, I want more of you, okay? There's, there's no special prayer. There's no special anything. It's just, Jesus, give me more. Jesus, I want to be baptized in the, in the Spirit. Like, fill me with your power. Fill me with, with your fire, God. That, that's all we need to do. There's nothing special. And, and so I just want to encourage you to do that. Um, we're not going to do anything anything fancy or special right now. We're just going to, we're going to close here. Um, but I just want to encourage you into that. I want to whet your appetites. Man, what if there was more God than what I'm experiencing? There is. There is. And so let me just, let me just pray and then we'll close because I know we got a meeting. So Lord, I just thank you for who you are. I love you, Jesus. Um, we just praise you. Lord, I just pray that you will fill people with the power of your Holy Spirit, that, that, that you'll just move in our midst, um, and you'll continue to just change our lives. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. You are worthy to be praised. You are seated on the throne of honor. Come and move in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, the, the team might just sing over you here. Uh,
but, but I, you're dismissed. The prayer team will be up front, so if you would like prayer, um, we do have the, the pre-annual meeting, so this is the meeting where we like talk and, and, and argue about everything and yell at each other and stuff like that, so it's, it's really fun. Um, just kidding, that's not what we do, but the annual meeting that we kind of just formally vote, this is the meeting where we really go through things and talk about the numbers. And so we'll start that in about five minutes. So parents, go get your kids. Um, All of our financial documents, constitutional documents, they're in the back of the sanctuary on that table by Haley and Pastor Amy. And so you guys can go and grab that. We will start the annual meeting in five minutes at 1140. Let us experience the glory. 